I'm going to walk through a quick demo of the OnePlan platform, and I'm going to look at those three components uh, that Jim just talked about. I'm going to start here with strategy. You can see I'm in one of the areas in the solution called My Strategy. And here we have articulated a set of objectives. This particular, you know, our, our demo company has a set of uh, well, that's six or so, seven objectives that they want to want to achieve this year. So this is where the business leaders can come in and, and define those objectives. And underneath those objectives, we have a whole list of, of key results that we are trying to achieve. So the accomplishment of a key result means the, the, the completion of the objective or the objective being met. That's the whole goal here. So if I drill into any one of these, if I just grab one quickly, I can capture information about this particular objective. It's currently at risk as we are in flight on this. What is the budget that we're associating with this? This is an active objective. It's not a proposed one, let's say for next fiscal. Uh, it has some key results associated with it. It also has two particular projects that are directly associated with this key objective. And that association is something you're gonna see come up over and over again as we go through this demo of how we are associating initiatives and in, in projects to objectives to key results, how we're splitting those associations so that we can split up the budget, how things are associated to applications and business capabilities, and how those things are also associated back uh, to objectives and key results so that we have this nested understanding of how everything interrelates so that we can make confident decisions understanding that you know what if i if i stop this project what's the ripple effect what key results will we not be able to achieve what objective will be in jeopardy as a result and what assets are impacted by that decision that's our goal here if i drill into uh any one of the these key results, I can capture other information, including I can do status reports on how that's progressing and kind of keep up with that information and, and, and be able to sort of track that and, and monitor my progress. So that's the OKR capabilities. We've got a webinar next week that's going to go into a little more depth in that, but that's a bunch of capability we have here around articulating what we're trying to do and how will we know if we've got there. So the next piece of this, is I'm going to jump over to the IT lens and jump over to my enterprise architecture. And here, I have a different view. I have some products, the organization being one plan itself here in the demo, uh, some applications, some capabilities, and some value streams. And if I jump all that open, you can see we've got a whole bunch of information about these different co components of our enterprise architecture. Some are current, some are the target where we're trying to get to. We have them, some are proposed, some are done, uh, some are in flight, and so forth. And if I drill into one of these, you'll start to see some of that association really come to life. So here I have this, this CRM application, the CRM component, if you will. Uh, it's on track. It's got a bunch of information. It's, it's in its development stage. We know, you know it's expected to end at the end of 2026. So we have tombstone-like data about this application. And obviously, this is configurable to track what we need to track. And I'm going to show you how Smart360 is going to use some of that data in a few minutes. And then down here, it is associated to an objective. So it's, it's integral to the accomplishment of this particular objective. Uh, it is linked to a couple of initiatives, including one of the projects we're going to talk more about in a minute, associated obviously to this organization, but you could manage multiple orgs in here if you had to. It's also linked to a couple of business capabilities and a couple of products. So we could see how this this application impacts you know, those capabilities that might be very critical to us or a product that we're putting out to market, the applications in the background that are driving that, we wanna be able to have that line of sight because as we make decisions, we need to know what the knock-on impact is across all of this information and across all these sort of core components. So if I jump back out to my list, I'm gonna jump over to the dashboard. And in here, I'm in the, some of the Smart360 capabilities. So here's my repository of all my applications. You can see here what's current, what's planned, what's targeted, uh, what's maybe going to be wrapped up or, or uh, you know, decommissioned in due time. And we can drill into all of that information. We've got other information in here about the business processes and so forth. We have a webinar planned to go very deep on this. So I wanted to just show everyone this capability. But then I'm going to jump out here and look at this. A particular visualization that we have is visually how do all of the projects we're trying to do relate to the applications in here so simple relationships here we got a project here that's going to touch three of them if i scroll across this can get pretty complex and we need to understand this we need to know are there multiple projects that might be touching one particular application 
uh, that might be actually delivering that application or providing content or capabilities to it. Well, what if we cancel that project? Will those capabilities that are also needed elsewhere no longer get done? And we need to know that as we make those decisions. So rich visualization, more to come. We're going to go deeper on this in future demos. But right now you can see sort of some of the power of this capability as we dig through uh, all of this rich data because we're linking our projects and our work effort to the applications and other assets we have, as well as tying those back to strategy. So to bring this around to some sort of full circle, I'll jump in here. I just want to go quickly to uh, my portfolio summary to start. There we go. In here, I have my portfolio of projects. So I have my portfolios, my programs, and my projects. You can see some of the different tooling that's been connected to these projects when it comes to execution and delivery of them. I'm going to drill into one because I want us to sort of dive into this in a bit more detail. So now looking at this in this lens, what I see here is some, some key information about this. I also see that it is associated to a specific one of our objectives at 100%. It is split across two key results. So its budget's been split 75-25 so that as we're tracking the investment we're making in achieving a specific key result, we have divvied up this project's work or its total costs appropriately so that we have a true understanding of what each key result costs or what the investment was to get there. Likewise, if I scroll further down, it's, it's also linked to a couple of those, to the value streams with a similar split, and it's associated to several applications, one of which we looked at a minute ago, and it was there, but here's the sort of reverse lens. So 20% of the investment in this particular project is going to be sort of charged to as part of the cost of ownership of the CRM RB 3.2 project, or, or application rather. And then likewise, it's linked to a specific marketing messaging business capability. So now we have that other lens. We can see what applications that this project will impact, as well as what key results it's going to contribute to the accomplishment of, which will lead to the accomplishment of this particular objective. So in executing that, we'll dive in a little bit deeper, just kind of go through some of this other core capability. It is here where I can plan the resourcing that I would need on to accomplish this project. So I'm planning out, this is my commitments, so I'm looking at what would I need in terms of resourcing to move forward with this project? So what's my anticipated need? And I could drill in and schedule in timesheets. Uh, we can do that in a subsequent webinar, but I wanted to show you where you plan for this so that we have a true understanding of the resourcing requirements. And then more importantly, what are the requirements for our budget? And we've imported our, our costs in here from the resource plan to bring in this particular data and then we've added some other costs we can integrate this to a financial system here we're looking at budget as the project gets going we can start to draw in the actuals and do comparisons to understand are we as our budget you know where are we related to budget by month by week and whatever the case may be for managing the project but here's where we articulate that budget and we know in the background that this budget is being split across a couple of different key results, a couple of different applications and so forth. And this is where we define all of that. And then obviously we can do work planning. This particular project is set up in Project Pro. And I'm just gonna sort of expand it out quickly. So you can see we have a full scale schedule with those resource assignments already in place. Uh, some tasks have already been updated and we're now working through the project. So this is the actual execution of this particular project and where we are managing it. And we could go and do status reports and so forth. A couple of things I want to sort of highlight coming out of this. Uh, here's my overall portfolio view. I'm going to switch to a, to a prioritization. We're working on some new reports and I wanted to show this quickly is here we have a portfolio network. So this shows me those portfolios underneath that, those programs, as I drill it out, what are the different uh, key results we're trying to accomplish in that program? And then if I go again here, I can drill this out even further. I wanna pull some of these out for you. There we go, there we go. And you can start to see some of the you know, improved customer experience leads to this particular key result. So we're working on some new reporting. This is using Power BI that we can sort of further visualize that relationship of a portfolio through to the projects and the programs and to what key results that they are accomplishing. So there you can see just some work we're doing on some new reporting. 
Now, let's look at this from a portfolio prioritization. Because what I want to understand is if I'm going to prioritize or unselect certain projects, what key results won't I be able to accomplish? What applications and other capabilities will that impact? So I got a couple of different views here. I'm going to look at this quickly and say, from here, I can see, click on that, there we go. I can see which applications are associated to each project. You can see sort of in some cases there are multiple. multiple. So if I start to unselect or deprioritize some of these proposed projects, for example, or this one that's on hold, if it were to stay on hold, well, that's going to impact that application we were looking at earlier, uh, our ability to get it done, maybe to add a module, whatever the case may be. So we need to have that full lens. When we make a decision, it's not in isolation. Traditional PPM, we've all done these prioritization models over the years, but we weren't looking at it in the lens of, well, what's the impact to our IT assets? What asset won't be upgraded or enhanced or changed that might have had a knock-on effect to other projects that were waiting for that? What strategies won't we achieve? So I jumped to just a different view I've created, my straight product prioritization view. Here we go. You can see here, I now know what the key results are associated with each of these projects along with the applications. And so now I wanna make some hard prioritization decisions. I could start by just stack ranking and I could start to move projects up and down the list if I wanted to. But maybe I wanna look at this from a budget perspective. And so here I'm looking at it and I know for the window of time that I'm trying to plan, I've got a target here and that's represented here. I've, I'm over my overall allocation and I'm over it in certain months as well. So now I can start to make some decisions. I'm just gonna make a couple of little tweaks here to my view. I wanna be able to see again what key results will be impacted as I start to make those hard decisions. Well, let's start with the projects that are on hold. Let's keep them on hold. And as I do that, you'll see my budget starts to adjust. Maybe some of these proposed projects, yep. They may be proposed, but they're not gonna make this window because we've gotta make some hard choices. And as I continue to scroll down, maybe I knock out one other one. And magically here, hey, look, I'm actually slightly under, I'm a little off in one month. I could start to drag and drop some projects. I could move this project over and see if that impacts my budget. Helped a little, little bit, but not enough yet. And I could move some things around. Ultimately, I could smooth out how the, how the cash flow is going to work or the, how the expenditures are going to go while also um, making sure that I stay underneath my target budget. But in doing that, I had clear line of sight that in making these choices, which key results I was impacting, and are those the key results I can live with? You know, are, where are they in terms of the priority of the objective they're related to? I could even bring objectives into this as well and add that as another column and say, what objectives do I have to make the hard choices on uh, and what key results Maybe we'll have to defer to later as we make these hard choices around budget, or I could do this also through the lens of resourcing. Which projects should I have in or out of the equation around resourcing? You can see we've got some resourcing constraints. We still have the same projects selected and unselected. So we're starting to look at where would the resourcing fit? Uh, what other changes do I need to make? Which might mean moving some projects around to stick handle my way around some of those constraints that are in sort of some of those core months. So lots of flexibility. The objective here is to give that complete lens. Business leaders have articulated what they want to accomplish from certain objectives and the key results that will indicate and confirm that they got there. Uh, as execution leaders, we have tough choices to make around how we're gonna deploy our resources, how we're gonna maintain and stay within our budgets, and what projects are we going to do, and which ones are we going to defer or put on hold. And from an IT infrastructure perspective, we want to understand how are the assets we have going to be improved, retired, updated, and so forth. Where are we trying to get to and what initiatives are we enabling? And so that we're all working in lockstep. We all understand the objectives. We all understand the key results we need to achieve. And we all understand which projects we're going to be doing and what assets will be impacted by those decisions. So we wanted to give you a high level overview of how we are expanding the one plan solution to give you all three of those perspectives and the solutions and pieces that come with that.